Hello fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be reviewing the new Aeropress Go. So the Aeropress is a great thing, it's a brilliant coffee brewer. I won't get into the Aeropress too much because more than likely you're very familiar with it already, in fact you probably already have one as millions of people do. It's small, it's lightweight, it's portable and importantly it brews brilliant coffee. So why have they brought out a new one? Let's see. So this is the Aeropress Go. I mean, it's not just the Aeropress inside it, it's a whole package. This is what makes it the Aeropress Go. The fact that you can pick this up and go with it. It's for using on the go, which is why it's the Aeropress Go, as opposed to the Aeropress Stay, or oh, it's just Aeropress. What some people have focused on when they've been reviewing the new Aeropress Go is this, which is obviously part of it, part of the Aeropress Go, but they've tended to hone in on this as being a cup. What Alan Adler, the inventor of Aeropress and Aeropress Go says, is that what they wanted to do is to create a really neat package that you could take away with you, that you could go out with, you know, that you could use on the go, which has everything in it. The fact that you can use this as a cup, it wasn't the primary design feature. They weren't making a travel cup to put a smaller Aeropress in. They made a neat, smaller Aeropress that fits into this package so you can just take this with you and you've got everything you need inside it, bar coffee and hot water. If you're stuck for a cup, which most people won't be, but if you are stuck for a cup or if you need a second cup, you can use this as a cup, but they haven't designed a travel cup and then made a small Aeropress to fit in it. Personally, if I was out and about, I would have this e-coffee cup, this bamboo e-coffee cup, probably in the bag with me or a Nutella jar which in this case I've got ground coffee in, but I use these as coffee cups as well. They cost £1.75 and they come full of Nutella, which is a bonus. So let's brew some coffee. So this cup takes 200 ml, so I'm gonna use 15 grams of ground coffee to 200 ml of water. So there are two main methods for using the Aeropress. One is a standard method, where you would put the Aeropress onto your cup, you put the coffee into the Aeropress, you pour the water on, you stir it, and you plunge. The other method is the inverted method where, funnily enough, you start off with the Aeropress inverted, i.e. upside down. You put the coffee in, you put the water on, you stir or don't stir, depending on the recipe you're following, and then you allow it to steep, again, for however long you want to, following whatever recipe you prefer. You then put the filter on, put the cup on, flip it over, and then plunge. Now, one of the main differences about the inverted method and the standard method is that with the standard method, as per the instructions, you would brew concentrated espresso style or lungo style coffee and then dilute that, top that up with water or with milk, depending on what kind of coffee you're making. That's what Alan Adler designed the Aeropress to do, is to make espresso style or lungo style coffee to then be diluted with hot water or with milk. What most people using the inverted method want to do is to allow the coffee to mix with all of the brew water and allow it to steep and then plunge. So that's the difference really between the two methods. So the method I've began to use more recently is kind of a hybrid of the two. I use the inverted method, but I only use about half the brew water in the actual plunge. So I only actually allow the coffee to come into contact with about half of the brew water. And then the other half of it I top up with. I find it easier to do, and I can't detect really much difference in the cup or any difference in the cup between doing it both ways. Now, if you're someone with a much more developed palate than me, you might be able to detect a difference. I'd be interested if you try this and see if you can detect any difference in the cup using the same coffee, but personally, I can't, and I find this method just a bit easier and a little bit quicker. Grab a filter. Coffee that I've just ground. So I've got the Aeropress Go inverted. I'm using the Brewista Smart Scale and I want 15 grams. 15 grams. And then I bloom, which as you probably know means to just cover the coffee grounds with hot water. And I leave it for quite a long bloom time, which is about 45 seconds. That'll do. And then I carry on. Pour in 200 grams because I'm using this cup which will take 200 grams. 100 grams. 
100.2, but that'll do. Use the little stirrer thing to stir it. I know some people don't like to stir it or some people like to slightly stir it. I tend to stir it about 20 times quite firmly. Then I do this. which is to plunge the air press down to the water level. Put the filter holder in, put the cup on, flip it over, and then nearly push it down on the scales then, but I'm not going to do that. Because I don't want to knacker the scales. And I normally just rest my arm on the air press to plunge it. And just lean slightly. And as you can see, because I didn't have a load of air in the way and I've only used half the brew water, I'm done. That was really quick. And top up. And there we go. And it tastes nice because it's nice coffee. And because it's brewed in the AeroPress. Or the AeroPress Go, which is just an aerograph so slightly smaller and in this neat little package. So clean up with the AeroPress Go is just as satisfying as with the standard AeroPress. You just take off the filter and by the way I reuse my filters which I'll explain in a sec and then and that wasn't on the floor in case you think that I would do that I've not got ground coffee all over the floor honest. So the reason I reuse the filters and I find that I can use a filter between 10 and 12 times before it rips and is no longer any use. is isn't because I'm tight. And if I'm honest, it's not about the environment either. Although it obviously is good for the environment to use these 10 to 12 times. But the main reason I started to reuse my filters is that when I use a filter for the first time, even though I do rinse the filter, I do tend to detect a slight, just a little bit of, of a paper taste in the background. Maybe it's in my head, I'm not sure, but I can just detect just a slight hint of a, of a taste of paper. I noticed when I didn't have filters with me and I reused a filter, that that slight paper taste wasn't there once it had been used for the first time. So what I determined from that is that I get a slightly better cup from a filter that's already been used than from a brand new filter that hasn't been used yet, even if it has been rinsed. So for that reason, I reuse the filters. And as I said, I can get 10 to 12 uses out of a filter before it starts to rip and, uh, and they use a new one. And put the bits back in. Not like that. Not like that. Put the bits back in. Like that. Put that in there. Put that on there. Put that on there. Come on. If there's one thing being really, really honest, that I'm not the biggest fan of. It's this sort of silicon lid. It's a little bit of a faff to get on. I think I might have slightly preferred it if they'd made a screw on lid or something like that rather than this. It's okay, it's just, I just find it a little bit of a faff to get on. It's not a big deal. But maybe if they'd have made a, you know, a screw on lid, it might have been a little bit easier than this. So, because of the way that I brew, the AeroPress Go is actually better for me than the standard AeroPress. So I would use this version of the AeroPress, even if I wasn't using that part of it, because I'm not really using the full height of this one anyway. It's fine for me to use the smaller AeroPress. I do understand that some people brew an AeroPress, many people, use the inverted method and they want to use all of the brew water in the AeroPress. They want to brew with the full 200ml or 225, 250 mil, however much they're brewing. They want to use all of the water in the AeroPress. They don't want to dilute. And for those people, they probably would look at this and scratch their head and wonder, you know, why, why would you want to make a smaller version? But don't forget, the AeroPress was actually designed to make Lungo or espresso style coffee and then to dilute with water. That doesn't mean that's how you have to use it, but that is how it was designed to be used. So some people might think, well, 
surely they should make a bigger air press, not a smaller one, because we want to brew in, you know, in bigger volumes. But if you're using it the way that it's designed to be used, you would be diluting it. So there's, there'd be no real reason for them to create a bigger air press. And there is reason for them to create a smaller air press because it allows them to get it into this neat little travel package. And if you're brewing with it to dilute as you know, it is intended to be used, being slightly smaller makes no difference. Now, one thing to say is if you normally put a grinder in your um, air press, so for example, the uh, air grind, you can fit in the standard air press and with the air grind, the handle comes off and fits down the side and you can actually fit it in. Um, the Polex Mini will actually fit in in the top of a standard AeroPress as well. With this being smaller, and obviously with it needed to fit in here, you're not gonna be able to do that. But personally, I think AeroPress have, have really aimed the AeroPress go at the bigger market. You've gotta remember they're a business. You know, they need to sell as many of these as possible. So they're gonna aim for the biggest market. And I think the biggest market for them probably is people who are using either pre-ground coffee or people who are pre-grinding the coffee before they go out, rather than people who are taking a grinder with them. And I think that people who are taking a grinder with them would stick to the original AeroPress and would probably have their own customized travel pack, something they've made themselves that allows them to fit the AeroPress with the grinder, with coffee, with any other bits they need, with the cup, into a, a neat package rather than needing to buy something like this. So just going back to the cup thing, one observation that my son had earlier when looking at this, and my son's into coffee, he's, he's a barista, is that if you were using this as a cup, what do you do with all this? It would force you to sit down and, you know, drink your coffee and then clean up and then put it all back in and then carry on. But if you just wanted to brew coffee and then go and carry on, you would have to have something else to put all your bits in while you were using this as a cup. Look at this. Okay, this has got coffee in at the moment, but this small travel cup, which is, as I've said, a Nutella jar, almost fits. Well, it does fit, but it almost, only a millimeter or so off that fitting inside it. What AeroPress could do if they wanted to release a new version where it is an all-in-one brewer with a travel cup, is to actually put an AeroPress branded travel cup inside, make this slightly bigger so that you can fit a cup inside with the AeroPress fitting inside it, which this almost is only about a millimetre or two off slipping inside. They'd have to make it slightly bigger, I'd say. But then you could take your cup out, you could brew into the cup, you can put all your bits back in the neat little package, shove it in your bag, carry on, walk with your coffee, and then when you're finished, open this up, put it back in, and shove it back in your bag again. Just an idea. And there we have it. That's my review of the AeroPress Go. Thank you very much to AeroPress for sending this to me to review. Remember to subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button, of course. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you don't like this video, Please give me a thumbs up. Tatty bye. <laughs> Sake. Mm, did that again. Yeah. Happy birthday. Come here. You bugger. So going back to the cup thing. Oh, fuck's sake.